Are you going to be listening to the Canada Reads debate? I am going to be screaming <laughs> at the television saying, JD, say this, say that. <laughs> I'm Jeannie Becker, and this is Mark Sakamoto, the golden-hearted <laughs> Mark Sakamoto, who has written the most exquisite book called Forgiveness. And we're going to ask him some questions. Okay, um, what's the best part of uh, writing this book? What was that for you? Oh, for sure, the interviews. Um, both my grandparents were alive. The two main protagonists, Mitsue Sakamoto and Ralph Augustus McLean, were still uh, with us both. Uh, Ralph is still with us, and uh, so interviewing them uh, for nights and nights were really some of the most sacred moments of my life. What was it about my book that connected with you? I found forgiveness to be so poignant because um, it just resonated with me so loudly because my parents are Holocaust survivors, and um, you know, my mother was born the same year as your grandmother. So they were living through the war years, you know, exactly the same time, very different experiences, yet still uh, total hardship. And uh, their, their lives were totally uh, taken and rocked and turned upside down. Um, yet they managed to uh, pick up the pieces and keep on going. Um, so, uh, I, I don't know, there were just so many um, similarities, but most importantly, what resonated with me was the fact that your family always kept an open heart and encouraged the next generation to keep an open heart and that the generation after that, and, and that's so, so inspiring about it to me. And I think that's uh, the only way that we can all, uh, you know, really live compassionately and uh, We've just got to really be able to forgive each other on a very big scale. I mean, it's really looking at life through that particular lens of forgiveness that I think um, I love so much. Okay, what is the strangest thing that you've ever done to research a book? Strangest thing. Um, on the Japanese-Canadian side, I bought every single book that a Japanese-Canadian person had ever written, and it came, the agent came with like, she had them in like the backseat of an old 1986 Mazda. I felt like I was buying like illicit, you know, weapons or something. It, it was a weird transaction. Do you remember how your love for reading began? Yeah, without question, my love for reading began with my mom uh, who took my sister and I to the library on a very regular basis. And English was not my mom's first language. I mean, she barely I spoke English at all, and, and certainly not a word of it when she arrived in Canada in 1948. But uh, by the time I was born in 1952, only four years later, she, you know, had learned a, a little bit um, about English, and she always loved, loved, loved the whole process of reading and books. And so she took my sister and I uh, to the library and just read all the great uh, stories, you know, to us and turned us on to all these great books. And then my sister was my older sister, so she was very savvy and she would bring the most fantastic books home into the house. Um, yeah, I remember the first big gorgeous book that my sister bought me was a book of Japanese fairy tales. Really? Yeah, a oh. big, big, I still have it buried somewhere in a box in the basement, a big gorgeous book of Japanese fairy tales. My favorite one was The Emperor and the Nightingale. Mm. See, this is destined. I know, that's what <laughs> I said. <laughs> what do you hope readers take away from reading your book? I hope, oh, they, I hope they take away the fact that we can't be complacent. And, um, you know, as, as your family history also uh, reveals, the world can change very, very quickly. And, and progress is not always a given. And so we have to be vigilant about the kinds of um, uh, resentments and angers and, and hatreds um, that uh, fill the pages of forgiveness.